This is your Vancouver Real Estate Market Update for June 2022. We're getting into it right after this. Hey everyone, I'm Craig Veroni with Remax Masters Realty, your local real estate agent here in Vancouver, BC. And in today's video, I'm gonna cover what's happened in the Vancouver real estate market through the month of May and what's coming that could affect that market. I shoot a ton of videos about what it's like to live, love, and own here in Vancouver. So if you haven't yet, please hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell as well so you never miss a video. I really want you to be able to stay up to date on all the latest tips and insights into the Vancouver real estate market so you can become an expert too. So let's jump into it. The Real Estate Board of Greater Vancouver reports that residential home sales in the region saw a 31.6% decrease from those sales recorded in May of 2021 and a 9.7% decrease from the sales recorded in April of 2022. Last month's sales were 12.9% below the 10-year May sales average. The Real Estate Board of Greater Vancouver Chair Daniel John says that with interest rates rising, home buyers are taking more time to make their decisions in today's housing market. Home buyers have been operating in a frenzied environment for much of the past two years. This spring is providing a calmer environment with fewer multiple offer situations, allowing buyers time to explore their housing options, understand the changing mortgage environment, and do their due diligence. Upward pressure on home prices has begun to ease in the housing market over the past two months. Where home prices will go next will depend on housing supply. While we're beginning to see modest increases in home listings, we still need housing supply totals to more than double in order to bring the market into balanced territory. The MLS composite benchmark price for all residential properties in Greater Vancouver is currently $1,261,101. This represents a 14.7% increase over May of 2021 and a 0.3% decrease from April of 2022. If you want to stay on top of the market, whether you're buying or selling, knowledge is key. And the SnapStats market reports are a fantastic fantastic way to arm yourself with tons of knowledge about your market area. To download the full reports, simply click on the images below to download either the Metro Vancouver, Greater Vancouver, or Fraser Valley reports. Now, if you're watching this on YouTube, down in the description below is a link to a sample report. Please go ahead and review that. And if you think that it's something of value, and trust me, you are going to love these reports, then simply fill out your name and email address to start receiving those reports immediately. To talk about what's coming that could affect our real estate market, I have a surprise guest for you today. Reza Sabour, a mortgage broker with Santa Mortgage, will be joining me to give his take on a bunch of new developments that have happened here in Vancouver that will definitely be impacting our real estate market. Thanks very much for joining me today, Reza. Uh, this uh, episode of the Vancouver Real Estate Market Update is being brought to you by the 49th Parallel Coffee Company here at First and Lonsdale. Um, since they opened, this has become a really dangerous spot for, <laughs> yes. for every local because uh, with their amazing coffees and Lucky's Donuts here, <laughs> you, you can spend all day and pack on a few extra pounds. Yes. Uh, but thanks, thanks to them for hosting us. Um, I want to talk, uh, dive into um, the BCFSA's um, published report recently about consumer protection um, recommendations that you you talked at length about recently in your Straight Talk podcast. Absolutely. Yeah, so first of all, Greg, thanks for having me here mm -hmm. uh, as part of this. And yes, the, so for those of you who don't know, the BCFSA is the British Columbia Financial Services Authority, and they are the province's regulator of both real estate and mortgage uh, services. Yeah. So um, they've now been working on probably a year and a half now, I think, sort of behind the scenes on some proposals that they would like to see the government of British Columbia start to impose and use when it comes to real estate transactions in our province. So uh, the recommendations have finally now been released uh, and if you go to my uh, Sabor Mortgages Instagram channel on my IGTV I host a segment called Straight Talk and I've gone in length there about it as Craig mentioned but here I thought we would just touch upon the first two or three points that I think are going to have the biggest impact on our real estate uh, market here. Um, so the one big thing and I guess the whole point of, of this is essentially called the cooling off period. So the cooling off period is uh, legislation that will likely Pass. I'm, I'm pretty confident uh, the government will roll with this. Um, and it's uh, a three-day sort of mandatory period between when you sign
sign a contract, um, uh, sorry, when you make an offer, uh, and your offer is in and accepted, to when you actually remove subjects. So it's a three day period where you have the opportunity to back out of the transaction, um, essentially for any reason. Um, but also the three day period is meant there for you to do your financing subject, or if you want to do an, uh, an appraisal or a home inspection, review strata documents, whatever it is that you may need that time for, it's now being essentially mandated that you have that time. And I believe that the, the, the three days actually start. So, you know, if, if you wrote an offer today and it was accepted, the three days actually starts tomorrow. Exactly. Right? It starts yeah. the following day. Absolutely. And, uh, and so this is, you know, in an attempt to create a little bit of a, uh, a more due diligence period of time for a buyer so you're not feeling rushed and you know going into something without an inspection and then you know the province claims they've had a lot of nightmare reports of people buying homes blind and then doing inspections later and finding a lot of problems so this is trying to address that. Uh, BCFSA has been very very careful to mention this is not an affordability package they're not trying to attack affordability or help with affordability this is only trying to make the real estate transaction process more transparent and fair to both buyer and seller uh, and so that's kind of the, the goal of this mm -hmm. um, so outside of that three-day period um, you know one of the things that has been implemented to try to cool down the opportunity for a buyer to put frivolous offers on the market on many many different properties knowing they have three days essentially to back out is that they're thinking of introducing a fee right so that fee is in talks right now to be anywhere from 0.1 to 0.5 percent of the purchase price so you know on a million dollar uh, property just to make it easy, that's as, as low as $1,000 and as high as $5,000, right. where you can be penalized if for you know frivolously pulling out of an offer just because you, you can. Um, and, and that would obviously go to the seller. The seller would be able to retain that money, yeah. and, uh, and that's to compensate them for the three days that they've lost uh, in the market. So that's the kind of the, the uh, I would say the anchor that's going to make this kind of fair to the seller as well. Um, and then the, the last thing, which is kind of the biggest thing that I think is going to change our real estate market for good is potentially ending the blind bidding process. Right. So a lot of Scandinavian countries, European countries have already been doing this for decades. Yes. So we are quite behind when it comes to real estate regulation in Canada. Australia too, I believe, Australia right? Australia does this as well. Yeah. Actually, Australia is sort of our sister city when it comes to legislation. They seem to be about five years ahead of us, both in real estate and mortgage rules. So I think we're just trending towards where everybody else has kind of gone. Right. And essentially what the ending of that blind bidding process is, is giving the buyer the information, uh, you know, when, when they've made an offer on a home, that buyer then will maybe have the right to know what other offers have been made and mm -hmm. what amounts those offers are so that they know exactly what numbers they're competing against. So some ideas are doing a live auction where everyone sees the purchase price and everyone's bidding on it. Right. Uh, so that's how uh, a lot of the Scandinavian countries do it. Uh, and some is just removing the secrecy of the uh, offers that are already presented. So both the buyer and seller know exactly what's on the table. And that's kind of a, apparently sort of coming into play to try to take away some of the, the heat from, uh, you know, an overinflated housing market. I, I agree with you. I think that this is going to be one of the big, you know, have one of the biggest impacts on, on our market. And I, I actually think it is a good thing. Um, you know, I've heard so many stories stories over the last few months. Um, in fact, one instance happened right in the building that I live in. A home sold, there were three offers on it. Two offers came in around uh, a very, very similar price point. The third one came in 100,000 above that. So, you know, for, for any buyer, that's gonna stink. When you find out that you've paid 100,000 or more for a home that, that other people were bidding on, that, that's gonna hurt. Absolutely. You know, um, Absolutely. and I think the getting rid of this. Now, to, to this point about the, you know, these BCFSA recommendations, the Real Estate Board of Greater Vancouver, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, I mentioned this in my last market update video, they've actually been working um, to change the rules of cooperation uh, regarding um, 
a couple of things actually. They're, they're looking to change. So when a seller says that I'm not going to be looking at offers until a certain date, you know, the director uh, direction of offer presentation form, they're thinking of making that irrevocable. So if a seller signs that form and says, okay, my home is going to be listed on a Monday, I'm not going to be looking at offers until the following Tuesday or Wednesday, yes. they can't change their mind. Yes. And this is to, to help do away with um, those instances where a, a seller has signed that and someone comes in with a bully offer and is able to, you know, Absolutely. jump the line and, and everybody else that's, that's looking to wait, you know, kind of is left uh, out, out in the cold. So. And that's actually one of the other points that BCFSA yeah. has also recommended is a five day period where between listing and being able to accept offers, you have that pause period yeah. where it gives time for an organic growth of interest and audience to build up and it's all fair when it launches. Yes. Everyone can have the same starting point. Uh, so yeah, that's actually one of the other points that, that uh, they recommended. But one of the other, so the other thing that the, uh, the Real Estate Board of Greater Vancouver is, is looking at is in fact dealing with this multiple offer situation. And one of the things that they're thinking of implementing and changing in the rules of cooperation is um, making it mandatory for uh, um, sellers to disclose, uh, the seller's agent and the sellers to disclose after the fact to anyone that's participated in that multiple offer situation. So if there were five groups participating in a multiple offer on a certain property, the seller and the seller's agent would have to sign a form stating uh, who, like which of the age, you know, naming those agents and their brokerages. Yes. Um, uh, and, you know, the, the offer that, that they, they put in. And I think that is a, a fantastic idea to help increase transparency. Only, the, only those people participating in that multiple offer situation um, will have that disclosure. So it's not going to be going to the public. Absolutely. It's, it, but it helps in that transparency for any of those buyers and the agents that are participating. So I think these, these changes are going to be good in the long run. A lot of people are, you know, throwing their hands up and, and sort of railing against, you know, the different authorities, whether it's the CFSA or uh, the Real Estate Board of Greater Vancouver for making and, and trying to implement these changes. But I think in the long run, these are actually going to be really helpful, not just for the buyers and sellers, but for us agents as well. Absolutely. And, you know, I think that there's that old saying, the perception of change is always scarier than the change yeah. itself. And this isn't the first time our industries have gone through these types yeah. of changes. You know, if you go back every decade, some monumental change has always happened and we've always adjusted. Yeah. And this is just an evolution of our real estate market here. We're only just really catching up with the rest of the Western world. You know, as I said, Canada is a little bit behind when it comes to the sort of progressive model of real estate that some of the Scandinavian and European countries have been practicing, which is generally a little bit more transparent, yeah. a little bit more fair. And so, yes, there's going to be a little bit of upheaval in the beginning. I think a lot of people will be a little unhappy because change is hard. Learning new things is hard. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're if you're 30 years into your career and you're you know two years left before you retire and now you have to change everything, it's hard to learn all these new things. But if you're a young agent, whether you're on the real estate side or you have to deal with the mortgages as a result of these changes, uh, it's an actually exciting time because you know you get an opportunity to then become an expert yeah. and so you can really position yourself as the leader in this change and, and really make a market for yourself in that respect so and it's and as you said it's just more fair to yeah. everybody involved so I think you know once the growth period is over I think it'll be widely accepted I want to jump and talk now a little bit about um, the recent interest rate hikes where you think things are going how this is going to impact you know the real estate market the financial market in general uh, and just get your get your thoughts on that yeah absolutely so so for someone like me who's in the market who's in this business and I consider myself a bit of a data geek so I, I tend to be very much into the data and I read all the reports and I listen to all the economists we knew this was coming yes we knew rate hikes in general were coming yeah. I mean the Bank of Canada to give them some credit we're actually very transparent from sort of the peak of the pandemic yeah at saying that you know what expect rate hikes expect a lot of rate hikes. We are going to need them and we're going to have to do them and it's going to be tough. Um, so we kind of had this in mind and you have to remember mortgages these days have these rate hikes already priced in. Behind the scenes they know these rate hikes are coming and so you know the, the level of rate hike that we've seen uh, has been somewhat unprecedented yes. in the sense that we've had several jumbo rate hikes. When, when I say jumbo anything over a 
quarter percentage point that happens at once is considered a bit of a jumbo rate hike. So we had two back-to-back 0.5% rate hikes. Uh, there was some speculation that it would actually be 0.75, but yeah. it thankfully it didn't happen. Yeah. But there is still room, I would say, for another full percentage point before the end of 2024. So you can either expect that to happen in two more half a percent increases, four potential quarter increases, one triple and one quarter. We don't know the way it'll happen, yeah. but when they meet again in July, you can fully expect probably another half a percent. And of course, this is all because of the big scary I word, inflation. Yeah. And so the Bank of Canada, in partnership with the government, is essentially now slamming the brakes on all the stimulus spending that we had to do during the pandemic. Uh, and you can argue wherever on the political line you fall, whether or not that was necessary or not, but um, every G7 country did it. Yeah. So you know, you can't blame our country for that. Everyone did the stimulus package, the quantitative easing. Um, we actually did it relatively responsibly when you look at the other G7 countries, especially European countries. Right. They actually spent way more money than we did. Um, but you know, that's another point. But now we have to slam the brakes. Now we're in the quantitative tightening uh, phase. Which, do you, yeah. Sorry, do you think if, we're, if, if, if we do get another 1% increase in, in interest rate hikes, do you think this is going to push us into recession territory? Yes, I definitely do. Yeah. Um, you know, depending on which economist you listen to, the head of Goldman Sachs uh, the other day said we're potentially heading for what's called a consumer recession, where companies and, and uh, large businesses are going to expect to have reduced profits, uh, people are going to have less cash to spend, uh, and then there's other talks of having a massive global financial recession. Um, you know, I think in Canada we'll probably see our own sort of domestic recession recession coupled with the effects of a potential global recession. Uh, but recessions are part of the market cycle. They're right. part of the monetary policies that generally get implemented by Western countries and they're a bit of a reset. And they tend to happen regardless of what's going on every 10, 15, 20 years. So in this case, yeah, when, when central banks generally raise rates too quickly, uh, and, 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 I, and I don't want to be them right now because it's a very <laughs> delicate thing to balance. Yeah. I don't envy the position that they're in because if you raise them too quickly, and, and you know you, you create that sentiment that that's just going to keep going, we do hit recessions. Now the benefit of a recession, I don't want to say it's a benefit, but you know one of the reasons I tell my clients not to fix mortgages or go get a fixed mortgage right now at 5% is that when we hit a recession, typically what happens, I mean it's not always going to be the case, but normally what happens is that rates will eventually come back down. Right. Because the government then has to go back into the stimulus of you know, stimulating the economy through through bond purchasing and, and pumping money back in, which is only going to slash rates again. So if you're currently in a variable stay, even though rates are going up, because the equivalent fixed rate is already one and a half percent higher as yeah. it is, um, and you're going to take advantage of the downswing probably during your term when it when comes it, back down. Yeah. Alternatively, if you fix right now, you're looking at 5% or near 5%, wow. and then you're stuck with that for five years. Yeah. And we're not going to be in this situation for five years so that's right. pretty much you know you can almost bet on that because right. the economy as a whole is actually doing quite well yeah we're just seeing a lot of pressure on inflation and uh, consumer price index I want to talk uh, I don't know if you, you you read the Scotiabank's recent article they had a very bullish eight, eight out, great hikes. well yeah. their, <laughs> their pessimistic outlook like their worst case scenario was that home prices will actually increase by 10%. What do you think of that? You know, it's it's interesting. I, I don't, I mean, I'm not an economist at Scotiabank, but I don't personally agree because we're already seeing the softening of the market. I, uh, I agree. You yeah. know, I've seen price drops in almost every neighborhood. Yeah. Um, Vancouver is a bit of a different animal because we're so deprived of land yeah. um, that, you know, prices here, in terms of how much they'll go down versus like Saskatchewan or, or Calgary, yeah. uh, where you can build in every direction. Yes, they're gonna see bigger price drops. Um, we're probably not gonna see as big of a price drop here because our demand both domestically and internationally for British Columbia and for Vancouver is very high. Yeah. We've got a backlog of immigration. We've got massive, massive interest from global and domestic to come here in BC. Over 100,000 people moved here just last year. Yeah. And we've got hundreds and hundreds of thousands of backlogged applications for permanent residency and work permits yeah. and stuff. And so, you know, that's what makes BC's amenities package, this weather, this location attractive. And so we're sort of protected a little bit by price decreases, but not 
a lot, you know, so yeah. we're still seeing that. So I don't agree with that personally. I think maybe in other parts of Canada they could be on to something. Um, they also predicted we'd have eight or nine rate, rate hikes. You know, again, I don't think that's going to happen either. Um, economists tend to be either very bullish or very bare. You don't really find a lot of middle ground. Um, so it depends on also who they're working for, yeah. private economy uh, or government economists. They tend to be very different. But I have to say, this Bank of Canada governor, Tiff Macklem, is very different than who he replaced. Uh, Stephen Pulitz was someone who was very secretive, didn't talk to the Canadian public, almost felt like the Canadian population couldn't handle the news. Wow. Things happened behind the scenes and then he would just announce it. Okay. Tiff Macklem, as soon as he took over that governor role, was very transparent from day one and actually went on camera right at the beginning of the pandemic, looked into the camera and said to the Canadians, like, we're going to keep you abreast of every change that's coming and we're going to do it in a way that you understand. And honestly, they've stuck to that message the entire time. So all you have to do if you really want to follow the data is just follow what they've said so far because they've essentially done everything they've said. Yeah. Every rate hike they said would happen has happened. If they said it was going to be half a point, it was half a point. You know, and they didn't really leave a lot of uh, ambiguity there, which I respect because that's government speaking directly to the population during a really difficult time. Yeah. And I think they've done a decent job of that. You know, people are going to criticize every central bank and they're going to criticize every government body. But we're pretty lucky in Canada to be where we're at yeah. globally. And I think they've done a decent job. That's awesome. Yeah. Reza, thank you so much as always for joining me. Your, your insights, uh, your knowledge uh, about what's going on. The, the data that you consume on a daily basis uh, and interpret uh, is just fantastic. Um, so thank you for coming in and sharing thank with you. us. Thanks and for uh, appreciate you. Yeah, thank and, you so much. Uh, look, look forward to next time. Absolutely. Okay. Hey, thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed that video and you want to learn more about Vancouver neighborhoods, I have filmed a ridiculous amount of neighborhoods around Metro Vancouver, and you can check them out on this playlist right here. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button here because on this channel, you're going to find everything that you need to live, love, and own here in Vancouver, so don't forget to subscribe.